The war started uh, not last year in 2022. The war started actually all the way back in 2014. And what Putin had in mind on February 24th was actually uh, to uh, when he attacked the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, as well as Kharkiv. He had an attempt actually to overthrow the government uh, within three days, uh, which was the goal. But apparently he did not succeed um, uh, because Ukraine was really, really fighting uh, very, very hard um, uh, since then. Uh, the Russian forces over the past one year managed, we see a hor horrible uh, war crimes in the war. We see tens of thousands of people who have been killed, millions of Ukrainians who have fled the country. Uh, but nevertheless, what we see almost one year later is that uh, Vladimir Putin has managed to unite the West uh, that is helping Ukraine. Ukraine managed to retrieve some uh, retrive some territory uh, uh, that was taken by Russia. Uh, we are providing uh, Ukraine uh, with uh, weapons. Just recently, uh, we we sent um, HIMARS and then uh, Patriot system, and now uh, even some European countries. Uh, plan to send tanks, which will be tremendously important for this uh, upcoming spring uh, uh, for, for Ukraine to win. So whoever thinks you know that Ukraine is losing, that is not true because uh, Ukraine, with the help of the West, uh, regardless of all those horrible atrocities happening there, um, Ukraine is able uh, to, to fight. Uh, what Vladimir Putin wants to see, he wants to see a protracted war. Uh, but what we see here is that uh, Russia will suffer tremendously economically within the coming months. Um, Russian um, um, military is not performing as everyone thought it would perform in Ukraine. Um, and what we need to do right now, we need to continue to support Ukraine and not to allow Russia to dictate the terms of negotiations because what they wanna do right now is to engage in negotiation and basically to buy time to regroup uh, uh, because they do not plan to give up on Ukraine. And right now is the right time really to continue to support Ukraine. But I wanna emphasize, you know, one other thing. Um, we are one year, almost one year reaching um, uh, since the last year uh, invasion. And Russia also had different goals, you know, within Europe to divide Europe even more through their influence operations, um, to also influence tremendously African countries as well as pl places in Latin America. Indeed, uh, Russia has been using also information operations in Africa to portray the United States as the aggressor and responsible responsible for this war and to blame the West for uh, for the food crisis um, in Africa. And when it comes to, you know, the rest of the Europe, they were also weaponizing uh, refugees uh, with that. And the Balkans also come within uh, the very same, you know, scope um, um, where Russia has had, you know, its own goals that we can talk about later. But one thing that I will say is that uh, given that uh, Ukraine um, is doing quite well, as long as Ukraine is doing well, uh, we will not see any uh, serious uh, conflict in, in the region. So uh, we should yeah. be really, really grateful for uh, Ukraine's efforts. Certainly Kosovo has done a lot of support for Ukraine, not only in words, but also in deeds, and also because they share um, the same um, type of um, um, similar history in terms of the war. Uh, uh, what Ukraine really does need now is certainly, you know, supports in terms of military and intelligence, uh, but there are also the limits what places in the Balkans can do in that respect, what, but what the Balkans can do, they can certainly, you know, help with the support uh, of, of Ukraine uh, diplomatically and internationally by condemning Russian atrocities um, and Russian actions um, 
in Ukraine. But when it comes, you know, to the Balkans, um, as I mentioned, this is all part of the same bigger picture uh, and bigger goal that Russia has had uh, prior to the invasion um, uh, in 2022. Uh, what countries in the region need to do, they really need to stay um, united and to fight together against Russian influence um, in the region that is unfortunately um, um, quite impactful and uh, efficient. Let me tell you what Russian goals are in the Balkans. Russia does not plan to occupy the Balkans rolling on tanks and jets in the region. They do not need to do that because Russia has been investing tremendously in influence operations in the Balkans at least for a decade. Um, Russia uh, has had very close ties with Serbia, with the Republic of Srpska, for example, um, through uh, also um, uh, countries that depend uh, uh, on gas, uh, with, with Russia on gas. Uh, Russia has also invested tremendously in the support of the Orthodox Church using the typical narrative um, regarding the Slavic Brotherhood and the Orthodox uh, Christianity. Um, Russia has also had invested tremendous resources um, in Montenegro, also because Montenegro has access to the Adriatic Sea. And let's not forget that Russia also uh, tried to overthrow a regime over there um, um, prior to their um, joining um, NATO. So this is what we see right now in the Balkans is really nothing new, just the continuation of Russia's efforts over the past one decade. Uh, but the reason why the West is a little bit nervous right now, it is because of the war um, in Ukraine. And you just mentioned the pumpering uh, of the West. Uh, the thing is, when we think about uh, Serbia in particular, we need to think about uh, Russia's goals, but also Vucic's goals. So um, the main goal of President Vucic is to remain in power. And he has been engaged in this um, tactic of balancing between uh, East and West. So while at the same time to support China and then Russia and then the European Union and then the United States. So his goal is always to project himself as a source of stability and how to do it by uh, uh, always escalating things in the region and then portraying himself as someone who can solve uh, the problem um, uh, by, medi by mediating. Um, the same thing, a similar strategy is actually for Russia. So Russia wants to use the Balkans uh, to distract the West from its aggression uh, in, in Ukraine. And the best way to do it is to use internal proxies in the region to constantly be on the verge of a conflict or a verge of a chaos, um, and then to portray itself as a mediator and to say, um, Russia can solve this issue, Europe, but then, you know, to, to, to make certain concessions regarding Ukraine. And the West should not fall for this trick uh, because that's a well-known strategy that Russia has been using in its own region. Uh, what we see right now in the information space is that Russia has invested a lot of resources on Telegram and on other social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, using um, uh, trolls and bot farms uh, to polarize the Balkan further, to put their narratives uh, regarding um, Ukraine um, and to inflame the region even more. We all know that the region, given you know different uh, ethnic tensions and different religious um, um, uh, differences has always been uh, easy to be triggered. So Russia knows how to inflame uh, the region. And this is why I cannot emphasize enough that the West should pay attention to influence operations over there because in information warfare is a critical part of Russia's military strategy. Um, and um, there are numerous offensive and, def and, and defensive um, 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 
information operations that the West, along with its partners in the Balkans, should do. Um, I'm afraid what we are going to see, and what we see right now, uh, are all those influence operations that are tied to different, you know, um, uh, cyber attacks. So we can expect more and more asymmetric use of force in the region. As of today, what we are talking today, I do not see any major conflict that we saw, like the one during the 90s. But what I'm confident to say that will continue, all those sorts of escalating, then de-escalating um, tensions in the region, uh, what we see right now in, in Kosovo, uh, what, what happened uh, uh, in, in Bosnia, Republika Srpska, Montenegro is also very, very, very fragile. So all those places are places that need to um, uh, get like additional attention from the West, but not at the expense of Ukraine, because that's exactly what Russia wants. I do not see any time soon that this, uh, that Kosovo and Serbia will find a mutual uh, uh, language. Um, and the reason for that is, as I mentioned right before this, that uh, the president of Serbia and the Serbian government in particular, they also have uh, their own interest with um, uh, unresolved issues with, with Kosovo because they use Kosovo for their own political purposes to escalate and then to de-escalate the crisis. So let me just give you an example. Whenever you know there is some uh, internal problem uh, within the country, um, they uh, use uh, regional um, uh, differences and, and, and regional problems to escalate and then to put that in the Serbian news as the core um, information on that day. So uh, just recently when there was ammonia leak in Serbia that harmed many people, on the very same night uh, they uh, ramp up the tensions regarding barricades um, and roadblocks and put that in the information space as uh, number one news. So when we think about this particular crisis, we need to think about also internal incentives, how to solve this crisis. Uh, uh, in terms of you know, mutual recognition, I do not think you know, that it's going to happen um, um, anytime, um, anytime soon uh, uh, as we are speaking today. And the role of the United States after many, many years of uh, the European Union trying to mediate uh, to immediate um, uh, dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, the United States, you know, stepped in, and they are trying to um, to find a solution um, that is, in their view, more practical. Um, um, but as I mentioned, because of some internal um, interests, I do not see that this is going to um, end anytime soon. Um, I do not see that this is going to escalate in any serious war. However, um, what I mentioned is that this is going to certainly continue to escalate and then to de-escalate whenever um, um, internal actors need that for their reasons. And plus, in addition to that, we have also the role of Russia and how they are using the information space, uh, especially on Telegram, um, uh, using Russian channels and Russian proxies uh, to inflame uh, this crisis uh, and, 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 and to make sure that there is actually uh, more tensions in the region um, because of Moscow also has its own um, incentives to have destabilized Balkans.